Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of Controllers Tech. This is yet another video in the CAN series, and today we will see how to use multiple devices in CAN. I thought I have explained the filter configuration properly, but apparently some of you still have problems with multiple IDs. So in this video, I will try to clarify that issue using the three different CAN modules. I am not going to explain everything here, and for that you must watch the previous videos about CAN. This one will typically focus on using multiple IDs, and that's it. So before we jump into the code, let me show you what I am trying to achieve. Here is the picture of the connection. You can see there are three modules, and they are connected to three microcontrollers. Also note that there are 120 ohms resistors connected at each node, just like it was in the previous video. Let's assume that the Nucleo is master, and the other two are slaves. The CAN protocol don't have master and slaves like I2C, but for now we can treat the Nucleo as master, as it is going to request the data from the other two. The Nucleo will request the data from the two slaves, and after receiving the data, it will send it to the UART. So it will be easier for us to see which slave is sending the data. Let's see the code now. This is the main file for Nucleo, our master. Here the initial defines are same as the last video. I have added these variables to check which slave has sent the data. Now in the pending callback, first we will receive the message from the FIFO. Then we will further check the ID of the slave. These IDs are allocated to the other slave devices, and you will see them in their main files. Based on which slave sent the data, we will set the respective flag. So this whole process is like an additional filter, on top of the hardware filters we already got. I will explain this failsafe in a while. Then we do our usual process. We start the CAN, and configure the TX header. Note here that DLC is 4, as I am going to send 4 data bytes to the slaves. And this is the ID assigned to the Nucleo. Then we will load this particular string in the TX data, and send the message. Now if you remember, we set some flags in the interrupt callback. Basically, if the data is received from the F103, then this flag will set, and if the data is received from F750, then this one will set. In the while loop, we will check if the either of these flags are set. If they are, that means some data has been received, and we will send the data to the UART. And if the data was received from F103, then we will request the next data from F750, and vice versa. This way the communication will be continuous, and we don't need to intervene. Now let's see the failsafe. I have defined a value for failsafe here. And in the interrupt file, it keep on decreasing every one millisecond. If this value goes less than zero, we will transmit the data again. This is kind of precaution in case of communication failure. Also we need to keep updating this value, so that it doesn't reach zero, and we do that whenever we receive data from the slave.
This is it for the master. Now let's see the code for the F103, the first slave device. Here also the things are same in the beginning. In the callback function, we will receive the data from the FIFO. As you know there are multiple devices connected to the same CAN bus, so we want this slave to respond, only when the master requests the data from it. To do that, we need one additional filter, and here it is. We will check the received data from the master. If the data is F103, we will set this flag. This will serve as a confirmation that the data is requested from F103. Now if the flag is set, we will turn on the LED. Then send this data to the master. Now remember one thing, that all the transactions are taking place on the same CAN bus. So which data will be received by which device, this will be decided by the filter configuration. Here the filter is configured to pass through the data from the F446, that is, from the master only. So when the second slave send the data over the CAN bus, our first slave, which is F103, will not let the data in. Alright, now we have reached the second slave. Everything is same here, except that the check will be performed for the F750. By the way, this is the ID for the second slave. I forgot to show it for the blue pill. Here it is 211. I have chosen these IDs for some particular reason, and you will see that in a while. And similar to the first slave, if the data is requested from this one, we will send some data to the master. Note here the filter is also configured to pass the message from the master only. Ok, so we saw the filter configurations for the slaves, and now we will see for the master. The master is supposed to receive data from the two different slaves, so let's see how the filter is configured for the same. As you already know, we have two important registers, ID register, and mask register. Those are the IDs of the F750, and F103. And we want the message from both of them to pass through. To do so, we can just check for the common bits in both the IDs. Like both the IDs have one at these positions. Let's fill the zeros in the rest. This makes up 201. Now my mask register will be something like this. If you remember from the first tutorial, I have explained this. When the bit of the mask register is set to 1, the ID register will be compared with incoming ID. The mask register is 1 here, so this bit of the ID register will be compared with the bits of the incoming IDs. Again it is 1 here, and that means this bit will be compared with the incoming IDs. It is 0 here, so this bit will not be compared. So wherever the mask register is set to 1, only those bits of the ID register are compared. 
And if all the comparing bits match with the ID register, the message will pass through. We can make it easier for this particular case, and only compare these particular bits. So now only this bit, and this bit, and this will be compared. Because the mask register is only set at these positions. So basically, these other bits of the ID registers are don't care bits now. They match or don't match, it doesn't matter anymore, since the mask bits are zero there, so they are not compared anyway. So I will set 201 for the ID, and the mask register. Now everything has been explained, so let's see the working. Here is the logic analyzer, and this is connected to one of the, the receive line. I am also opening a serial port to see the data sent by master. Let's start. We are receiving some data. Here you can see the transactions, taking place on the Rx line. And you can also see the data from both the slaves. Let's see what's happening on the Rx line. Here you can see the ID of the sender, and this is the data from the second slave. If we check the next transaction, here the data is sent by the master. Notice that the data here is F103. So, the master received the data from the second slave in the previous transaction, and now it's requesting from first slave. The gap here is around 2.5 seconds. This means that there was some transaction failure, and here the master sends the same data again. This happened because of the failsafe variable we used. Now the first slave sent the data. After receiving the data from the first slave, the master requests from the second slave. And here is the data sent by the second slave. So this process will keep repeating forever. You see the transactions taking place on the Rx line. And when there is a big gap, that means there was a failure, and the master requests the data again. Here you can see the data is updating continuously. So this is it for this video. I hope you understood how to use multiple devices. Especially the part where we configured the filters. I haven't explained every other thing, since they were already covered in the previous videos. So if you didn't understood anything, watch the first two videos in the can playlist. This is it for today. You can download the files from the link in the description. Keep watching, be safe, and have a nice day ahead.